Hi there, it's Carl Irwin, the Common Magician, and this is just a quick touch on the Guy Hollingworth uh, in the Hands Ruffle Shuffle, which I neglected to think about. I didn't even think about it. So this one's been taught by everybody. Um, whether or not they've had a right to, I don't know, but a lot of high-profile people have taught this. I think Oz Perlman did a video for Penguin back in the day. Um, Brian Brushwood, I'm pretty sure, has covered this as the In the Hands False Ruffle Shuffle that he taught on his Scam School platform. Um... You know, it's been passed around quite a bit. I'm not sure it's exclusive to Guy Hollingworth. It's a pretty basic concept. I think I would call this the in-the-hands version of a strip-out or push-through kind of false shuffle. Whereas the big three, the Truffle Shuffle, Einstein Shuffle, Truffle Shuffle 2.0, are kind of like an in-the-hands variation on the zero. This is an in-the-hands variation on the push-through strip out. So I'm not going to teach it in depth at all. Uh, as I said, so many other people have talked about it. I think that gives us a bit of license to talk about it without too much criticism because I certainly ain't the first and I'm not sure we're doing any damage whatsoever by talking about it. Again, I didn't even think of it um, when I was thinking of in the hands false riffle shuffles. Not just, it's not one that people commonly use. There are a few people that use it. I've seen uh, Penn and Teller use this on TV, so they're confident enough with it uh, that this is seems to be their preferred false shuffle. I think a Penn did it in that situation uh, that I'm thinking about, if I remember it right. The way it works is the deck is split in half. Uh, they are legitimately riffled together. Uh, there's even a waterfall cascade finish, uh, and there's even a squaring motion, so the cards do get... Uh, squared out. Now, one of the things that I'll add to this in terms of teaching is I think it can be helpful to do this in weight. I think it can be helpful to square and kind of weight in this situation. Another thing I recommend is that you give it a bend, and we'll look at what's going on mechanically here in a minute too, but I think it's good to give it a bend and release whenever you go to the next part, which the next part is going to be a cut uh, and then replace the cut so it's a shuffle and cut and then you're back into the stack that you started in. So what's happening here? Um, split. You're going to riffle um, one packet into the other, and then you're going to twist the hand slightly. So I'm actually going to push forward on one side and back on the other. The one that you're pulling back on is going to be the one that's on the top. So for me, it's always a left-hand packet. I shuffle the right into the left, pull back on the left one, push forward on the right just a little, only a little bit. And when you do this and you do the cascade finish, um, actually it didn't even work out there, but when you do the cascade finish, you see that you end up with this situation. There's a few cards on the top. There we go. You end up in this situation, see if I can show it to you, where you have a step. You have a step right here, right? And what you would do is you would cut at that step. Now, the way I do it is if you do that same thing, do the cascade waterfall finish. And what I do is I hold it on the far side like this, okay? And I'm going to keep my finger joint, my first finger, on the front margin of the top packet, and then my ring finger and pinky on the back margin of the inside packet. And what I do is I square the thumb side like this. And you can even rock the hands back and forth. Now what you have is you have perfect cover of this margin between the fingers. So they can't see the one margin sticking out. Most people will square this so that they're parallel to each other, but I square it so that one side actually squares all the way in the back. Uh, and then you can hold it in this position and you have really perfect cover, uh, especially if you square down the top corner like this. You have perfect cover and you can remain in this position for a while, which I think is a benefit when doing this type of a false shuffle. If you hold like this, it means that you have time misdirection. You have a delay in time where there's not the action of uh, undoing the shuffle is not immediately after the shuffle. You've had a shuffle, you're square, you're good. One thing you can do, as I mentioned, is give it a quick bend, which puts a little bit of air in between the uh, cards. That's something that you can do on the table uh, to uh, release the friction if you have a really tight uh, a weave that you want to try to break apart uh, on the uh, cut, on the strip cut. But if you give it a bend, that'll give you that as well. And then rather than pulling forward on the top side, which I think is the, the typical way, um, I come down here with my fingers uh, on the free hand, on the left hand, down to that bottom margin. So I squeeze tight between the thumb, first finger on the top packet, and then I push on the bottom packet with the first finger and I push hard up against the thumb and 
at the fulcrum, at the thumb fulcrum, you just divide the packets down, drop down the inner packet, grab it with the thumb here, pull it apart, and then because this comes around and goes on top, it looks like a pretty good cut. Okay, so up to speed, you can kind of slow this down and go back to see uh, kind of the angles that I'm talking about. I'm not going to hit this very deeply. Um, you spring off, cut. This is the top. This is the bottom. Put the top inside of the bottom, which looks legitimate. Push forward on, on the uh, uh, top packet inside of the bottom. Pull back on the bottom packet. Allow it to cascade together and then uh, square between the hands. Most people would cut right at this moment, but what we're going to do is we're going to square in the back and hold in position just like this and just wait for an opportune time. Give a little bit of bend to give some air. When we're ready, we just reach down and then you can divide out one section, put it back on the top, looks like a complete cut, and then you're there back to the original situation. So that in a nutshell is the Guy Hollingworth one. Some people prefer it because you kind of do a legitimate false shuffle. I mean, they see everything go together. It's all verifiable and you square. Uh, but my recommendations, two things, give some time before the cut so that the cut doesn't happen immediately after the shuffle. And two, square the backside completely and maintain kind of that Leonard Green uh, angle separation with the fingers in the front between the uh, top and bottom joints. Uh, and then cut off the bottom, put it on the top, you're back to normal. So anyway, that's my little bit that I have to offer on that one. I don't use the shuffle. Those are my thoughts on it that I got from playing around with it a uh, long time ago. Never have used it for anything. Uh, but some people really like that. It's the one that they like to do. It's the one they learned. Um, just a couple of ideas on it. Guy, Guy Hollingworth, Drawing Room Deceptions, I think, is the book where he teaches it and probably some other places, too. Look for Oz Perlman, old video on uh, uh, Penguin. I can't remember what it's associated with, but it's a false shuffle that he teaches with something else. And then um, certainly online, right? Brian Brushwood is one place. A bunch of other people have gone over this. I want to say Alex Pandrea has covered this on his channel. Uh, kind of those big YouTube tutorial card magic channels have covered this years ago. Uh, can be learned there. So anyway, Guy, Holling Guy Hollingworth, strip out, in the hands, fall shuffle. Good luck with that. Happy magicking.